season or at least get the season started up. Uh, what what sort of concerns do you guys have as players about safety and about you know just being being able to make sure that you can handle everything you need to handle just to have a season and to play safely? Um, obviously, yeah, there, there's definitely some concerns just from you know what's going on, you know, with seeing what's going on with COVID and all that, but. You know, we trust in, you know, our medical team and, you know, everyone around us to keep us safe. And, you know, all our teammates, too, are, have been doing the right thing on and off the court. So um, our concerns aren't really there. You know, we know each guy is going to do what they can to have a season. So, you know, we're just going to keep pushing forward and do whatever we can so we can have a season. How important is it to to be mature enough as a team to, to handle that stuff in the right way? Because it seems like to, in order to play and be safe, you're going to have to make sacrifices and not do things you would normally do in college. How mature of a team do you need to be to make sure you all handle that in the right way? Yeah, no, that was a big word you used there was uh, sacrifice because, you know, we each know, each and every one of us know we need to do that um, from, you know, seniors down to freshmen. And um, there does comes maturity with that, um, knowing, you know, you can't go to parties or be out and about with – you know, a lot of people are on campus around a lot of people. Um, you know, we got to make sacrifices so we can so we can have a season. So we've been good about, you know, just staying at our cribs and, you know, not doing much other than just working out. Thanks, Steve. I'll wag it. Next. All right. Well, hey, uh, Kyle, um, just what was your thought, I guess, when the Big Ten came back? and uh, said that they would play football, which seems to be a good indication that uh, perhaps the winter sports will be able to, to go on. Uh, it seemed like there'd been kind of a hard line from the league and then uh, it seemed like some things have changed. Just uh, was that a relief in your mind to know that it seems like winter sports ought to be able to go on or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, we were super excited, you know, first off for the football team because, you know, we've seen how hard those guys have been working and, you know, how bad they wanted to play. So um, we were just super excited for them and that they get to, you know, have a season now. And then, um, you know, just the hope for us to be able to play. And then once they announced for us that we were starting, you know, when we were going to start, um, you know, super geeked up that we're going to have a season, you know, we're just happy to be able to play. And uh, your roster's kind of split almost down the middle. Guys who were there last year and six or seven new guys with transfers and the freshmen just, are you happy with the commitment, the buy-in that you've seen out of the newer guys? in the last couple of months? And, and do you feel like this is a team that can come together pretty quick when the time comes? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, the new guys have been great. Um, you know, they fit our program really well. Um, each guy is bought in hundred percent and, you know, we've been working really hard. Our team chemistry is, you know, slowly building every day, you know, with practices and lifts and, you know, just being around each other. So um, team chemistry is there, you know, it's something we just need to continue to improve. And um, yeah, I'm definitely happy with the new guys. Uh, being here. Okay, Tony. Uh, what do uh, Justin and Seth, what kind of dynamic do they bring to the team that maybe wasn't there a year ago on the court? You said Justin and Seth or Justice and Seth? Justice and Seth. And Seth. Um, no, I mean, they're going to be huge. Uh, you know, we were able to see, you know, what uh, Justice could do last year, um, you know, just playing with us in practice. and. You know, obviously with Seth, just how well he did at Harvard. So, um, you know, we're excited to see what they can bring, you know, offensively and defensively to this team. Um, you know, we're going to see more and more of that as practices, you know, uh, ramp up. But I'm definitely excited about them. Just looking at the roster, there's a lot of body types like that on the roster, including including you. Where, you know, how does that work? Where do you put everybody? I think that's just going to give us a lot of depth. You know, we're going to, you know, be able to play a lot of guys, be able to, you know, um, played a lot of different ways. So, you know, we're excited to see what we can do with that and, you know, have matchup problems, you know, um, you know, with certain teams, so. Hey, Steven, you're up. Hey, Kyle, you just asked about the, the various body types. A lot of you guys are between 6'6 six, six and 6'8, six, 6'9, six, that type of body type. Now, have you seen that more and what you've been able to see so far show up as a positive more on the defensive end or on the offensive end? Um, I could say both because I would, I would say, you know, all these guys we have, um, are able to move very well, um, you know, athletic. Um, so really that's going to translate offensively and defensively, you know, with, with matchup problems on the offensive end and then, you know, just being able to have size on the defensive end. So I think it's a good thing, you know, with the guys we do have, so more positive. And I guess what type of experience can Abel bring to this team here as you know, he's been a starter before at a college football, college basketball level, excuse me. You said Abel? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I mean, he's a, you know, he's a very experienced guy, you know, we're excited to see, you know, what he can bring to bring to the team, you know, as a, as a vet like that coming in. So, um, you know, we're excited to have him and, and see what it brings. Hey, Colin. Hey, Kyle, I think you're listed on the roster right now at, at 225. And I just wonder when Caleb's gone, um, are you, are, are you actually 225, and, and do you think that you're going to be playing in the post more, um, and, and how do you think your body's going to handle that? Yeah, I'm about, I'm about 225 uh, right now. I'm still, you know, um, I've cut off a lot of body fat, too, and gained more muscle, so that's something I was working on in the off season. But, um, you know, playing in the post is something that I've, I've been doing and, you know, I like to do. So, um, you know, I'm just going to keep working on, you know, doing that and uh, get used to, you know, playing against guys that, you know, have – have more weight on me so I just gotta you know use my quickness in that aspect and um try to use my uh, other attributes as you know to my advantage and how how different do you think that this team really feels just well when you get on the court that the speed that you guys play at the types of looks you're getting because when you when you lose a guy like Caleb and you bring in a lot of the guys you have just it feels altogether just entirely different with you guys on the court have you gotten that feel yet um, you know, not much. We, we, we still have a lot, you know, more time to get together with each other. We've done, you know, some skills with the team and stuff like that. But um, I think we definitely need to feel it out more to see kind of how we're going to play together and how and how we want to play together. Um, but yeah, you know, losing a guy like Caleb and, you know, losing those guys is, is going to be a huge hit to the team, you know, but, um, you know, we think we, we're bringing in a lot of really good guys and we have a lot of good returning players, you know, just to, you know, fill that gap. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, sure. Okay, Bill, one quick one, and we'll switch to uh, C.J. Walker. Thanks. Uh, Kyle, I'm just wondering what your impressions are of Ibrahima through some of these practices. Um, I, I think there was an expectation that he'd come in maybe a little bit raw and have to figure some things out, but now that he's a year into this, what, what stood out about him? Yeah, no, he's um, he's been improving a lot, you know, uh, strength-wise, you know, working in the weight room, um, even out on the court, you know, doing skill workouts, you know, with Coach T and um, being together as a team, so – um, definitely seen improvement in him. You know, I'm excited to see, um, you know, what he can bring during practice. Um, you know, so we're just, we're, we're still trying to figure that out. Thanks. Hey, thanks everyone. We'll switch over to uh, CJ Walker. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> uh, Adam, do you want to go? Sure, thank you. Hey, CJ, good to see you. How you doing? Doing well. Hope the family's well. Yes, sir. Just wonder what it's like for you guys. Um, we, I was just asking Kyle about, um, you know, sacrifices as a team you guys are going to have to make to make sure that you have a season. As a, as a, a senior, and as a leader on this team, uh, what, do you, what sort of example do you need to set and what do you guys need to do to make sure that guys understand that you, you can't have maybe a normal year of college if you want to have a season of basketball? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, for example, Eugene, um, not being to have a lot of in-person classes, things like that, just due to what's going on with the situation. Um, like you said, that sacrifice is really big. And for me, being a senior and things like that, just, you know, this is serious. This is a, a serious matter for people's families and individuals. And us as a team, um, it can jeopardize a lot. Um, so, yeah, that sacrifice is really big, you know, just being disciplined and knowing that our, our my season matters, our season as a team matters. And, I want to play. So, I mean, I'm going to sacrifice everything to be able to play. And I just kind of want to give that example to my teammates as well. So, you know, we can have a season. Do you think that your teammates all understand that? Do you think you guys are mature enough to handle that in the right way? Oh, yeah, most definitely. With me, Kyle, and uh, other returning players like Dwayne and EJ, um, we have fun throughout our season. Our coaching staff wants to play. We want to play. Uh, so we kind of emphasize that each and every day, you know, coming into the gym, wearing masks, washing your hands, hand sanitizer. Just make sure we're doing the right things on and off the court. Make sure we're not hanging out with, you know, just random friends and things like that. You know, being able to sacrifice that, you know, having friends and not being able to be with them as often. So, yeah, we kind of emphasize that every day. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of going the order we went before. So, Steve, if you uh, have a question. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> CJ, uh, just talk about Dwayne uh, Washington Jr., maybe his development. And uh, I think a lot of people are looking – uh, for him to kind of take that next step and become yeah. a consistent leading scorer type player. Just uh, what do you see in his development? What are the areas he can uh, can grow and develop uh, going into his junior year? Uh, he's literally been approved from his freshman and sophomore year. As you can see, he produced a lot for us last year, scoring the ball and things like that. 
Um, just me being hard on him, I just feel like he needs to improve defensively, you know, things like that. Everybody has things to improve on, but defensively, I feel like that's going to be a big thing for him this year. And with myself, um, but yeah, I can most definitely see him being a consistent leading scorer for us. You know, he can score the ball and get hot really fast. Um, and it makes the game a lot easier for me, you know, getting him involved, you know, spacing the floor out, things like that. So he's going to be really big for us this year, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I want to ask about yourself as well. You could talk about yourself. I know that's kind of a hard thing. Yeah. The last 10 or 12 games of the season, you were flying without a net there. You didn't have a, a real established backup behind you, and yet yeah. you flourished and played some of your best games as a college player the last 10 or 12 games. What, as you look back on that, what did you see, and uh, what can you do to kind of take that to the next level going into your last year? Um, just staying confident and staying consistent, um, you know, after practice, getting up shots before practice, you know, just staying consistent um, and just keep pushing myself. Like you said, I'm not having to back up last year and having to play a lot of minutes, um, you know, just figuring out the game, you know, just having a feel for the game, being more confident, knowing I had to take more shots or just being smarter within the game with foul troubles and things like that. So just expanding on that, just keep getting better and just keep, you know, staying consistent and working out, making sure, I'm, making sure I'm in the gym at all times, getting up shots and things like that. So that's probably the big thing for me this year. Um, yeah, confidence is just the biggest thing for me. I feel like I had that a lot going to the end of last year. Thanks. Okay, Tony, anything from you? Yeah, CJ, this is going to be a very different team from last year. Yeah. I wonder, as the point guard, how much are you playing in your mind over the last, I don't know, six months of what it's going to look like for you trying to get the ball to everybody and how that's going to work? I feel like it's going to work itself out. Um, I feel like me being a leader on the team, my teammates understand me, um, doing team skills and things like that, me and voicing myself, me and being a, a leader by example as well, and voicing that, it makes it a lot easier instead of, you know, just trying to figure it out or what is he going to do. Like, I feel like if I voice it and I show it, it just makes it that much easier and my teammates understand that, especially the returners. They know how I play. I know how they play. So, I mean, it makes it that much easier to know. Um, and then, like, the freshmen, you know, just keeping them, in the loop, making sure they're keeping up with the pace and things like that. Um, but I feel like me being a vocal leader just makes it that much easier. So I'm not really too worried about you know, chemistry and things like that. I feel like I'll be able to take care of that, me, me being a leader and just us you know, being basketball players. How much is that just in your thoughts, you know, away from the court, away from classes, just whatever, like just what you're going to have to do for this team and, and to keep everybody involved? Oh, all the time. Um, this is my last year. I only got one more go around. There's no coming back. There's no, there's no regret left. There's no, oh, I just need to fill it out. I got to take my time. Like, this is kind of like that all or nothing kind of mentality. Like, I literally have nothing to lose at this point. Um, so I think about it all the time, and I'm really excited about it, take on any challenge and things like that. Um, but I'm ready to play. I feel like last year, towards the end of the season, you know, them 10, 12 games really motivated me to show what I can do in a big 10 uh, for myself and for my teammates. Thanks. Hey, Steven, anything for you? Yeah, um, you kind of touched on it a, a little bit already, but you and Dwayne are the only guards left from last season. You guys had some transfers, and now they're in a, in a true freshman. I mean, what are the conversations like between you and Dwayne on you know, what happened at the end of the season is basically going to be the bulk of this year, especially as Eugene, mm -hmm. you know, transitions to the college level. Yeah, um, yeah, we talk about it a lot. Uh, we're gonna have to be in shape, really conditioned. Um, being leaders on and off the floor. Um, we just got to take that challenge on every day, push each other in practice to know it's not going to be easy. Um, and just being consistent, making sure we push each other every day in practice, uh, making sure we're taking care of our bodies with treatment and things like that off the floor. Um, and make sure we push pushing people like Abel or Eugene, um, just to make sure they stay ready at all times, just because you never know, you never can be called. Like you said, like last year, we never expected that to happen, you know, in mid season and things like that. So. Just be ready for whatever happens and, you know, just take on that challenge. So we talk about it every day. You know, we're willing to do what needs to be done for this team to win. How much of a benefit is it to have guys like Seth and Justice who you're bigger guys, but they can you bring the ball up and do a lot of perimeter things? Uh, it, it, it's hard to guard, I can say. Um, just seeing them, too, the way they can shoot the ball, the way they can score the ball. Um, and defensively, you know, EJ, KY, Seth, just that they can all switch. They can guard multiple positions. So that kind of makes it easier on defense. Uh, just give teams different looks. I feel like it's, it's hard to guard and hard to score against as well. So I feel like they're going to work out for us and they're going to really benefit us. And then just your first initial shots, um, thoughts on Eugene? Uh, really good. Um, he's a lot taller than what I thought um, coming in. Uh, really lengthy, can shoot the ball, athletic. Um, also can guard multiple positions, one through three. Um, 
Yeah, really athletic, smart kid, willing to learn, willing to work. Um, so yeah, he's just a really good kid. I'm really excited to have him on my team, you know, going to my last year. Here we go, Adam and then Colin. CJ, as, as a team, I wonder if you guys have talked at all about using your platform to speak out on social issues, uh, mm -hmm. racial injustice, things like that. Have you guys as a team thought about doing anything along those lines? Oh yeah, we've had conversations about it. Um, Nothing that we can 100% sure. You know, everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their different outlooks. Um, and Coach Coleman, he really supports, you know, what we believe. Um, he's not afraid to speak up either for himself or for us as a team. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about it, had conversations, uh, detailed conversations, actually. Um, so, yeah, that's just something that we take day by day, you know, something just to make sure we understand each other. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Colin, you got anything? Yeah, hey, CJ, um, what, what's the biggest adjustment for you as a point guard when you're going from, you know, you're playing with Caleb and, and through Caleb a lot of the time to now, you know, a lot of the scores that you have, like you're going to have EJ down in the post and, and yeah. Kyle had something, but you're also going to add, you know, Justice and, and Seth to the mix as well. What's the difference for you as a point guard when you're trying to initiate the offense a lot through the wing, maybe more so than the post? Um. I don't feel like it really changes um, just because actually we had Luther and Dwayne as well, you know, that could score the ball as well, that could shoot threes. Um, we had a lot of offense go through them as well. Um, and I feel like our coaches put us in the best situation possible, so I'm not really too worried about, oh, how I'm going to get him the ball, how I'm going to get him the ball. Um, I feel like I played enough college basketball to figure out, you know, my teammates and my spots and getting them in the right spot. So I'm not really too worried about, you know, making sure everybody's involved, everybody is engaged in the game and things like that. So, yeah, I'm not really too you know, doubtful of myself. You talked a little bit about, you know, your personal all or nothing mentality this season as a senior. Yeah. It just feels like, you know, throughout the team, you you guys have a really old team. Um, and yeah. you know, they've been here, you know, for four or five years or they're coming from other places. You know, yeah. they're, they're obviously veterans. Is that something that, you know, you feel is, is felt throughout the entire team and not just you personally? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, bringing in experience, Abel, Seth, uh, Justice has played two years of college basketball. So just that experience, you know, it makes it a lot easier going into practice. You know, it's not a lot of teaching or drill, 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 drill. It's a lot more things, you know, we can get through kind of faster and we can progress faster. Um, just because we have a lot of returners, Dwayne being a junior, Justin being a junior, EJ returning for a sophomore year. So it just kind of makes it that much easier, you know, having that knowledge and experience uh, going into practices, you know, building for a season to play in the Big Ten. And then, and then you, you personally, just with, with Abel being added to the roster, it's a little bit different. Well, it's a lot different than last year when you had – you know, DJ is the other point guard who's coming yeah. in as a freshman. Abel's obviously been around. Uh, I mean, you guys are both fathers. Uh, what, what's it like uh, to, to have him uh, in the mix and, and you know, play off, of, play off of him as the other point guard? Uh, yeah, just going through scare workouts and things like that. You know, he's really smart, can shoot the ball. I'm not going to turn the ball over, you know, smart defensively. Um, he doesn't look like the most athletic person. You probably think he's not good or should be a Division One basketball player as people would say, but he brings a lot to the team with experience. Like I said, uh, he's going to help us a lot. I might be able to play off the ball some, uh, playing the two um, and things like that. But yeah, he just brings a lot for us and he's going to help us a lot, whether he comes off the bench or playing a lot of minutes or whatever situation may be, I feel like he's going to bring a lot to the team. Appreciate it, CJ. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank Hi, how y'all doing, everybody? Hey, Dwayne, good to see you. Good, good, appreciate it. <clears throat> so, obviously, one of the big talking points with, with you coming into the season is you're going to be asked to do more, and you're going to, you know, your role is going to grow and expand. I wonder how you've approached that in the off season, and how ready you feel to take on uh, even more than what you were doing at the end of last season. Yeah, um, yeah, man, it's exciting stuff. Uh, you know, it's. <clears throat> You know, it feels right. Um, you know, I've talked to the coaches a lot, and and uh, you know, um, you know, we're on the same page with everything, and and I think uh, you know, my mental uh, has has changed a little bit. I'm um, 20 years old now, so um, you know, it's junior year, got here really quickly. It feels like I was just a freshman, and a uh, reality kind of hit, <clears throat> basically, um, you know, this year, and next year, and 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 that's it. You know, like so. Um, you know, mentally, I'm prepared and I'm ready to to take on this challenge and and you know be um, you know who the coaches want me to be and and you know, do what I have to do to to help the team win. So, can you expand a little bit more on that that mental part? You said you feel that that's been a big change for you. In in what ways 
do you do you feel that being different how do you think that's going to help you on the court um yeah man you know ever since we stopped playing in march you know we had a lot long time to just like just just hang out and, and do whatever so uh you know for me i was in the gym um but but i had a lot of time to self-reflect and you know grow up a little bit and just understand like you know some of the things that um, you know, my freshman and sophomore year, I felt I could have done better. And, um, you know, it was really, really good for me, important for me. You know, I, I talked to my parents a lot. I uh, just had a lot of deep conversations about my life, who I am as a person. Um, and I grew up a lot. And, you know, um, you got to be mature to, to, to be the guy that takes the, the tough shots at the end of the game. You got to be mature to uh, be the leader on the team, um, mentally and physically. You know, you got to be ready. Uh, for for all the challenges, all the different defenses they throw at you, uh, so all this, all those kind of things, uh, kind of are, are set in stone in, in my brain now, and, and um, I'm just uh, super excited for this year, and, and um, you know, taking a very serious approach. Thanks. Hey, Steve. Uh, Dwayne, I'll ask you about the two freshmen, uh, Eugene Brown and Zed Key, just kind of how they've assimilated to your group and. Uh, Seems like uh, Eugene may be a guy that could help out uh, maybe at the two or the three, perhaps. Just uh, what are your thoughts uh, maybe about his development, his availability, and, and those two guys together, I guess? Yeah, um, Gene and, and Zed are very two, two really great guys. Um, for me, uh, it, you know, I like, uh, you know, I don't want them to go through anything that I, I went through. So uh, I've been talking to them, you know, um, just, just helping explain, you know, what we're going through in practices or team skills or individual workouts, like uh, workouts with Coach Q, like how hard it's going to actually be and, and, you know, how um, different it is. You know, this is the first year for all of us that everything's like this. So, um, you know, we're all kind of in this phase where we're learning as we go. But uh, what I've been through in college so far, I just try to preach to them that, you know, if they have any questions, I'm here for them. Um, they're learning very quickly. Um, you know, their bodies are changing rapidly every day. Uh, they're working their tails off in the gym, in the weight room, uh, re recovering and stuff like that. And um, they're doing really, really well. Um, like uh, CJ said, uh, Gene's really tall. I didn't think he was that tall when he first got here, but uh, he's definitely uh, a taller wing. Um, you know, that, that'll be very good for our team. And, and Zed, um, a very solid, bigger dude, man. He, he's he's way, way more athletic than I thought as well. So. Uh, that'll be helpful as well. Uh, has good timing on um, rebounding and, and blocking shots as well. So uh, those two will be very good for us this year. You guys had to go home for about three and a half months. You didn't get back till late June, I don't think. What did you do in that three and a half months to kind of push yourself? I know gym availability was kind of down for a lot of people too. Just what uh, what did you do to improve as a player during that three and a half months? And it all had to be individually driven. Yeah, uh, so – uh, me and my father, um, you know, he had his uh, basketball career as well. So, he, you know, he's been my basketball trainer my whole life. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have a, a full court gym actually going back home uh, just just for me and my cousin and my dad. So, um, you know, we were in the gym. Uh, I took a week off, week and a half off. Uh, just got my body back to normal, ate some home cooked food, home cooked meals. And um, then we got back to it. Uh, you know, I, one of the main things for me, coming into this year was I needed to be stronger. Um, I needed to be able to, uh, you know, control my body and, and you know, be able to take uh, hits from uh, bigs or, you know, get over screens, be stronger and, and all those things, uh, defensively, everything. So, um, you know, I, I definitely talked to <clears throat> Q and got a workout regimen going. Uh, we had a weight room in there as well. So, uh, I mean, I was in there every day, man, every day. Um, that was, that was, that was our routine, uh, twice a day, maybe sometimes three times a day, go back towards the nighttime. But, um, yeah, we, we were working. So um, that was really good for me. And, you know, I feel like I, I got a lot better um, during that time as well. Um, had a lot of time to watch film um, and just break down my game and, you know, what, what, what I was doing good and what needed um, some work. Thanks. Yep. Okay, hey, Colin or Tony, either one? Um. You mentioned you're trying to be the, the player your coaches want you to be. What is that? Um, that's some stuff, you know, we, we talk about, we'll keep it in here. Um, you know, everybody's going to be able to, uh, you know, see what, you know, coach wants to do and, and what we do as an organization, as a team here. Um, but, uh, you know, if they ask me to, 
uh, score 20 points, I'd go out there and do, try my best and, and, and hopefully do so. If they asked me, they needed me to uh, pass 10 assists and, you know, try to go do that as well. So, you know, um, these things are just everything I'm just working on, you know, trying to just um, round my game out. Uh, you know, um, my freshman and sophomore year, uh, I was I was just kind of, you know, fixed on this, this scoring deal. I was, that, that was my main goal. Like that was just, you know, I'm, I'm wired to do that. That's, that's what I've been doing my whole life. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, finding other ways to affect the game, uh, whether it's um, just my presence on the court or, or it's me passing the ball or it's, it's me uh, being the communicator. Uh, all these things go into it. And, and I think that um, that's what I've been working on, um, you know, this, this, uh, off season to, to to become a better player all around instead of just, you know, focus on only scoring and stuff like that. Does that rewiring have to come um, – is that just with maturity or is that something that, that you actually focused on and worked hard to be more than just a scorer? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's a, it's a little bit of both. Like I said, uh, over the summer, um, you know, I got to watch, watch a lot of film. Like I just – you know, going to the basket, seeing three, four dudes wall up and, and contest my layup, floater, whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, the easier play would be to kick you to uh, the 40% Andre Weston in the corner. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just stuff, little stuff like that. It's just, you know, it makes the game easier for me, makes the game easier for my teammates. And, you know, the more I do create and, you know, now they got to be honest. Now they got to be you know, uh, fair, and, and it's not just worrying about me going to the basket and everybody sucking in, and then I'm just still throwing up some crap, you know what I'm saying? So um, all that stuff was like, it was hard for me to understand during that time, and, you know, still to this day, I don't know why, but, um, you know, looking at it now, I have a totally different um, view on it, and, and 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 I think that's for the better, so. Thanks. Colin, we got time for one more if you got one. I mean, who sparked that that mindset set change in you? Is that you, your coaches, someone else? Uh, you know, I just think that a lot of the guys that 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 I see at the next level are able to do a lot of different things. Um, the guy like Stephen Curry, for example, he's one of my favorite players in the NBA. Um, he you know can do everything on the court. You know, he he's a great shooter. He's a great passer. A great ball handler. Um, he, he reads the decisions very very well. Kyrie Irving in the same way, Kemba Walker the same way, uh, Bradley Beal, all these guys, they, they do more than just score the ball. They do, they have uh, all around games that, you know, um, are very, very uh, solid and, and they can do everything. So for me, uh, it's never been the fact that I can't do everything. It's just um, mentally, I got to, you know, understand that this decision is better than that decision. You know, it's just, it's basketball is a game of choices. What, what choice are you going to make? So, Am I going to kick it to the corner? Am I going to uh, read and, and, you know, pass and give it up this possession and next possession? Maybe I keep, like, it's just a bunch of game of choices. And um, I think watching film, like I said, over those months off that we had, it was, it was really big for me. You know, C.J. McCollum was another big guy that I watched a lot um, in his decision-making, excuse me, making the, the right choices, the right reads off ball screens and fast breaks. And, you know, um, you know, obviously, if you have the ball in your hands a lot, you can, you can shoot it whenever you want. So... Um, picking and choosing to uh, make the right decisions has been something that I've definitely uh, um, been thinking about and and and, and forcing in my brain. So this one. Okay. Thanks, Dwayne. Thank you, guys. Right back here with Coach. All right. All right. Appreciate you. Just start with opening. Or do we want to go questions first? Do you want to go opening or do you want to go ask questions? Yeah, let me just open and say a few things. What's up, guys? Good, good to be with uh, everybody. Hope everybody is safe and look forward to getting back to where we can do this in person here at some point <clears throat> soon. Um, 
it's obviously been been a few uh, few months since we've we've been together. I do want to uh, spend a quick moment to just thank our fans. Uh, since we're turning the page and moving on to this year, I want to thank them for for uh, their incredible support last year. We uh, all of our numbers numbers were up in terms of attendance and sellouts, and uh, they were really critical during our stretch run in February and March. Um, also want to thank our, our medical uh, personnel here. They've been unbelievable. Jim Borchers, as I'm sure you guys are aware of, following a football situation, has been unbelievable. Our trainer, Brad Watson, has done a great job uh, with us, really, since we've been here in mid-June. And uh, I think uh, Gene Smith has, has really led our entire department in an excellent way through through all of this um, as we've as we've moved forward, so excited about the return of uh, of college football. Excited about the return of our of our Buckeyes, and can't wait to watch them. That was uh, obviously a big moment for all of us a couple of weeks ago. Our guys have been on campus, like I said, since about mid June, and um, they have uh, they've done an exceptional job following all the protocols here. They really have. Um, uh, we have really have not had had to be shut down. Um, our guys have been been able to work out, albeit differently and not not as in larger groups. But uh, they've done an exceptional job following all the protocols. They really have. I've been really impressed with our our leadership. Uh, I'll talk about more. I'm sure there'll be some questions about our guys. Uh, of our 14 players, we haven't had a chance yet to be uh, to have a, a full team. A uh, healthy workout. We've still had at least three guys out in uh, in all of our workouts, and I can get to some specifics if you'd like. But uh, really excited about coaching this group, and um, feel really good about our, our leadership uh, with some of our older guys. But obviously, uh, we we need to get fully healthy, and uh, we certainly have some questions that we we need to uh, continue to answer as a group. And uh, as far as our schedule is concerned. I'll get specific if you'd like. It's pretty fluid right now, guys, um, because of the the changes that have been made within the, the number of games you can play. Uh, it's a really fluid situation. So I'll leave it at that. Open it up for questions. Okay, yeah, we'll start with uh, Adam Jordan. Chris, thanks for doing this. Good to see you. Uh, you I guess, first off, you, you mentioned having three guys out, and I was going to ask about, like, Musa and Seth, but where are you from a health standpoint? How How is everybody doing, and do you expect to have a full roster when you start practice here in about two weeks? Yeah, yeah. Um, good to see you, Adam. I think uh, it, I'll, I'll take each each guy's situation as it is. As far as Seth is concerned, um, he's made good progress following his – his uh, most recent sur surgery, which I believe was in January, he's made good progress. Um, but I, um, I think right now, uh, while he's made progress, I think in terms of being ready to play actual games in late November, uh, I certainly think that is, is in question whether he'll be ready for that. At this point, um, um, I, I'm not sure he will be ready, and I think he probably feels the same way. He's going to need more time uh, than that, but but we'll know more obviously in the coming in the coming weeks. Uh, Justice is is cleared and has been doing regular full activities um, for a couple weeks. Uh, Musa has not been cleared yet, and uh, uh, I, I do think that his return could be. Potentially, he's a little further along than, than Seth, but uh, he's not been able to do uh, workouts yet. Uh, we'll see as far as the start of practice. I think there's a possibility with him with the start of practice. You, you touched also on, on the schedule a little bit, and obviously it is a fluid thing, but can you discuss what the – what's uh, as you have to try to decide what to do with some of the games? I mean, the games that you're contractually, I guess, obligated to play is a pretty yeah. – daunting schedule what are you looking to do with the games you still have flexibility for and uh, what's sort of your philosophy as far as what the schedule is going to look like well as you guys know a typical year you play 31 um, 31 games and um, you know it used to be eight to ten of those were home games versus 
teams where you were kind of maybe playing some of your young guys. Maybe they were they were tough games, but smaller schools that you were bringing in here. Um, we're we're losing most of those this this year for for a variety of reasons. Um, so the schedule will look completely different. And on paper right now, it'll it'll certainly measure up as the hardest in the history of of of, uh, of our program, just given how unique the year is. Um, I can only guarantee right now that, that even beyond uh, the, they're still determining the exact number of Big Ten games. It's been set at 20, as you guys know, for two years now. And uh, I think everybody knows we were in the best league in the country um, last year. All the measurables showed that. I would assume that it will be that and then some this coming year. So they're looking at 20 games. Could it, could it be increased? It's possible. And if it, if it is increased and we'll know that soon, that'll change the rest of our schedule uh, to some degree. Um, it'll just change how, how we, how we formulate the rest of our schedule. The ACC big 10 challenge, I would fully expect to play. We're, we're on the road in that contest and the, um, uh, our game versus North Carolina and the CBS Sports uh, Classic is uh, that will be played as well, uh, I believe, on the same date. Um, not sure about the same location. Beyond that, I couldn't give you really any more specifics, even including the South Dakota event. Okay. Okay. Talk to you. Hey, Patrick. Um, just curious about what has been the, the hardest thing for you over these last few months, um, be that basketball or adjusting to life otherwise. What, what's been the most difficult for Chris Holtman? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I think coaches, I think in general, we're, we're um, pretty routine driven, right? You know, we're, we've, we've kind of have a routine throughout – uh, throughout the year, and uh, that was flipped upside down uh, during all this. Um, so I think that was that was uh, a, a challenge to kind of figure out how to best maximize your days, how to best do our jobs as effectively as we can do them in terms of recruiting. Um, probably the, the hardest thing in terms of my job was was the dis feeling disconnected to our players as much as we tried to do these types of zooms not being around their guys uh, for those for those final few months w was a real challenge uh, I think just just personally you know it's been it's been hard honestly seeing how people have been uh, you know certainly at our university affected economically I think that's a that's been a hard thing to see one of the things Ryan Day talked about was not overthinking things from a football standpoint, you know, drawing up plays and doing too much when you've had too much free time. I assume you can relate, although different being basketball versus football. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you have all that downtime. And uh, in reality, um, our time after the season was, was, was really busy. Um, it was just, it was a different kind of busy, you know, instead of traveling and seeing uh, uh, some of the events that we were to see in April or going out recruiting, you know, we were on the phone for, you know, 10 or 11 hours a day. Um, so it was a different kind of busy. Um, and then some of our slower periods, which typically happen around June. Yeah, you, uh, you can drive yourself crazy a little bit. Um, I think we've, we've all probably considered about five different offenses and defenses we were going to run, we're, we're going to run this year. I think most coaches have done that with their downtime and, uh, We'll see how beneficial it proves. Thank you. Hey, Bill Landers. Hey, Chris. Um, is, uh, is the fact that Seth may not be available at the beginning of November uh, any different from what you expected when you guys brought him in? Is that any kind of setback for him? And how does that change, I guess, maybe what you were hoping to do lineup-wise if he's not available? Yeah, I think it's an important question because I, I don't know that it's different than what our expectations were given he, he's been out for two years. Um, the, the, it, it takes, uh, it's 
this particular surgery that he has, it, it does take varying degrees uh, of recovery before guys feel completely comfortable returning to game action. And, um, um, you know, I think that we were optimistic uh, and still are that uh, come late November, um, you know, he's going to be in a place where he feels confident enough to, to, to be able to um, play in game action. But I think it's probably a, a tall task right now. I, I don't see it as a setback, to be honest with you. I think it's a no, he is he has really progressed, and you hear me say that. And yet, at the same time, he may not be ready. Um, I just think it's a byproduct of of the nature of the injury. He has he is making progress. He's doing things this week that he didn't do uh, last week, uh, which which is encouraging. But he's he's just got a ways to go. And I think in his mind, he's got a significant ways to go to get back to be the same kind of player he was uh, his sophomore year. And is Ibrahima, or I guess compared to last year, how, how much further along is Ibrahima and, and maybe how much closer is he to be able, being able to be a like, key contributor for you guys this year? I think things have slowed down for Ibrahima uh, a little bit, and that, that's been a good thing. Um, uh, I think he's, he's been able to pick up things uh, better than last year. Now, granted, we've not done a whole lot of team stuff. Uh, we're two weeks away from practice. Um, but uh, he's, he's in a little bit better shape than what he was. I think the biggest thing is he's just his, his, his ability to pick up things and practice and the things we're asking him to do has come quicker because he's been a, a year in our system. And that was maybe as, as big, the biggest um, uh, kind of impediment to, to his growth last year. It just took him a little while to pick up some things. Perhaps there was, there was some, some language issues there. Um, but he's, he's, he's a bright kid. He's doing really well. Um, and I'm excited about getting the practice with him. Thanks. Here we go to Steve Hellwagon. Hey, Coach. Uh, curious about um, the two freshmen, uh, Eugene and Zed, just how they've uh, come in. Are you happy with what you've seen out of them the last, uh, I guess it'd be two and a half months or so that you've worked with them or that your staff's been able to work with them just uh, – Commitment, uh, classwork, everything. Just what what are you seeing with those guys? Yeah, they've been really good. <clears throat> they've been really good, Steve. They've uh, they've been exceptional in the, in the classroom. We knew they were good students to begin with. Um, they've been working hard and um, have gotten better. They both have to get in better shape, Steve. They both have to get in, in, in much better shape, and they have to be able to – <clears throat> kind of push through fatigue, normal freshman stuff, push through fatigue and their work capacity has to continue to grow and increase. Um, but uh, both guys have done some really good things in our workouts so far. Um, you know, Zed has, has been, as we'd expected, he's physical, he's six eight seven one wingspan, about 255 pounds. And uh, he's used a lot of that 255 pounds in, in, in our workouts. Um, he's a strong, strong kid, and uh, Gene has um, shown ability to, to defensively, uh, we think, be able to help us. He's got to continue to, um, to improve some of his offensive skills and shooting at this level, um, but really pleased with both guys, really pleased with them. I want to ask about uh, the scheduling component. Uh, just seems like so many moving pieces and parts, and for yeah. you to be this deep into this, and don't know yet exactly how many Big Ten games you're going to play and have the Atlantis thing yeah. and non-conference and whatever else. Seems like some tough decisions are going to need to be made pretty quickly and doesn't seem like there's a national commissioner of college basketball that's out right. there to kind of govern this whole uh, process and, and reel in all these uh, – stray cats, so to speak. I don't know, just uh, what is the, I assume the conference comes first and then you fit in whatever events and otherwise you can fit in around it, but yeah. um, just seems like a real difficult process and football bleeding into December with television's got to impact that as well, I bet. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're preaching to the choir here, Steve. I'm with you. Like, let's go. We, we've got to make some really important decisions and uh, you're right. I think understand a lot of those, you know, the, the decisions with football um, have kind of delayed uh, 
um, and totally understand it, but it's, it's delayed the process a little bit. Um, Dan Gavitt's done a great job at the NCAA in terms of putting some parameters in place overall for all NCAA teams, uh, testing procedure or testing uh, requirements, and, and then obviously the game requirements. Uh, but we are waiting, uh, and we meet every – right now we're meeting twice a week as, big with, as, a, as a coaching group. Uh, we meet Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And uh, I'm also on a scheduling subcommittee with athletic directors in the Big Ten and a couple other coaches. Um, so I'm, I'm saying the same thing on those calls, that, that we really do need to finalize uh, the, the number I, I believe it to be 20. I expect that it could uh, that it, it's leaning in that direction, but uh, if there's an increase, it just changes. You know, the, I think everybody's concerned about overscheduling to some point right now. Um, I think again, everybody's going to play a really challenging schedule, but that's what you're dealing with is is a waiting waiting on a final word from from the Big Ten on how many games. Thanks. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Just talking to Dwayne, he mentioned that he had to go through some maturity and realize that he can be more than just a scorer, and he's trying to be the guy that his coaches want him to be. I guess for you, what is that? What, what do you want him to be? Well, I think we saw with Dwayne last year towards the, uh, the final third of the season what, what he can be. And, uh, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne needs to be uh, – Dwayne is never going to be a – pass first point guard. We don't want him to be that. I think he's, he's got to utilize his unique gifts in scoring. Um, and there is a freedom that, that he has. He was <clears throat> certainly of all of our perimeters had the highest usage rate um, uh, by, by a significant margin. Uh, and he's earned the right to, to continue to grow in that area. I do think he's has to read defenses a little bit better and, um, um, as he's playmaking for us, I think those that ability to read defenses, which he took, I think, a, a step in last year. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest questions about our, our group right now is, is will we and can we defend as a group? I think offensively, if we're healthy, um, last year we were third in the league in offense. Um, I, I think we have a chance. We, we lose tremendous uh, 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 two tremendous players in, in Caleb and Andre in terms of just shooting the ball and their ability to stretch the defense. Uh, but I think those guys were also exceptional defenders and had great size. So my challenge for Dwayne is to grow in that area of, of defense uh, and just continue to be him. I think he, excuse me, he took major steps last year. He, uh, you look at his step from freshman up to sophomore year, it was significant. And we wouldn't have been in the position we were towards the end of the year without him taking a real step forward. And then with CJ, he's talking about this is his last go around. What, what does it do for a head coach when your point guard has that kind of urgency, when he knows there's, this is it? Well, he's, you know, we've talked about it. He's, he's a terrific kid. He is an exceptional leader. I think he really does embrace um, kind of how we want to do things. He's an everyday guy. Uh, he also was another one and really, it was, it was really good to see him and Dwayne flourish kind of together last year in the backcourt. Uh, they really did in, in, in our stretch run. Uh, so uh, we're going to need him to take another step forward in every area, be a little bit more consistent shooting the ball, be a little bit more highly detailed defensively. Sometimes he's going to guard the best perimeter um, and uh, continue to lead at the high level he has. But I love where he's at right now. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, you had mentioned just there the, about you know, losing two 40% three-point shooters and, and Dwayne, or sorry, and Caleb and Andre. Um, and I know last year you guys were top three-point shooting team in the Big Ten. And, and when you lose guys like that, um, and obviously you're bringing in Seth, but there's uncertainty there. Where, where do you think this outside shooting has to come from when, you know, I know how much you guys put an emphasis on, on efficiency and, and hitting those outside jumpers is, is key. To yeah. Win. Yeah. It's a good question. I think that's, that's what we've got to continue to evaluate. Where is that going to come from? I, I don't know that the source is going to come uh, directly from two guys like what we lost. Listen, Caleb, Caleb Wesson is the best shooting big in the NBA draft right now. 
He is the best shooting big in the NBA draft. 106 threes last year. He took 14 as a freshman. Took 106 threes last year at 43%. Um, shot 43% overall, 43% in the league plays. The best shooting big in the NBA draft. So that is, uh, you know, that is something, and, and you combine that with Andre's efficiency. I think it'll be spread out among other guys. Again, that's where CJ is going to have to improve. Uh, Kyle Young has shot the ball exceptionally well. And everything we have uh, from three, everything we've evaluated this summer, everything we've charted, and we shoot every, uh, or we chart every shooting drill. And he has been top four on our team in, in three-point shooting. But I think it's going to have to come from him. It's going to have to come from EJ. Uh, Justice has, has, has shown the ability. And then, um, obviously, Justin, Justin Arns is, is going to have to provide some, some really valuable uh, things in, in that area. And he shot it exceptionally well. And I wanted to ask about EJ, too, because we saw last year that the leap he made at the end of the season was obvious. But has he, has he maintained that development track where he can be that kind of guy that you need him to be to reach the ceiling that, that you're hoping for this year? Yeah, he'll, he'll be critical for us. There's no question. I think that uh, we talked about that uh, last year. You know, I think it's, it's a big jump to go from where he was to say, you know, lead you in scoring every night. I think that's a, that's a significant jump. What, what I think he's going to have to be is on a consistent basis, he's going he's gonna to need to be one of our better players and on, on both ends. And um, that means his game is going to have to continue to grow. He's going to shoot more from the perimeter than he ever has. He's obviously going to be utilized through the post more than he ever has. He's got to continue to guard with more versatility um, than what he did last year. But he's in better shape. Um, he is a more consistent, more consistent in his effort um, than certainly what he was last year. And um, I'm excited to see what these next two months of kind of preparation are for him. Because as you mentioned, he's going to be critical. I think we have to be a, understand he's still a sophomore, um, but uh, he's, he's certainly going to be a more featured part of what we do this year because uh, we're going to need that. And to ask a quick follow-up on Caleb, since you brought him up, um, what has it been like to, to see him go through this, you know, extended draft process and how involved have you been? And, and how many times have you made that pitch that you just made to us? Well, I don't know if it's a pitch. Uh, perhaps you could you look at it as a pitch, but uh, feel free to tweet it out if you'd like. Um, I, I just believe that, honestly, guys. I, I do believe when you look at – when I look at some of kind of his comparables uh, in the NBA draft, um, I, that I, I I think he's got the best the best touch of any big guy, and I think it hurt a little bit the fact that he's not been able to get in front, and people uh, have not been able to physically see how big and long he is. Um, it's one of the things last year the, the the guys at Boston the first thing they said to me after his workout was he's bigger than than we thought <clears throat> and longer than what than what we thought so. It's been good. You know, I've, I've certainly uh, stayed in touch with him, but I've also kind of let him uh, pursue this. Um, um, and, but I've been in touch with, with him and, and Keith and Stephanie uh, more uh, right after the season as we were hearing more from uh, agents and uh, potential trying to do some digging with potential NBA organizations. But we certainly talked to a number of teams, and I know he's had a number of interviews uh, with teams and I have shared the same thing I said to you. Appreciate it. Okay, we have time for a couple more. First was from Stephen Means and then uh, Adam Gardner. Hey, Chris. Um, just obviously when it all gets healthy and you get a full roster going, this roster just looks a lot different yeah. than the rosters you've had in the past year. I mean, there's a lot of guys here who are 6'6 six, six to 6'9 six, and they're not necessarily post players. Um, I asked Kyle this question. I'll ask you as well. Do you see that more as a, as a benefit on the offensive end or the de defensive end? Well, I think time will tell. I do. I, it's a, it's a, it's a valid question because I think uh, how are we going to, we're certainly going to look differently. And, and to your point, when you look out on the floor, you don't see someone with quite Kyle's or excuse me, Caleb's length and size and, and physicality outside of Ibrahima, but you do see a lot of guys between, really 6'4 to 6'8. To um, you know, Seth is, is all of 6'8. <clears throat> um, 
So we have a lot of guys in those sides. I think what it could could allow us to be potentially is is um, play a little bit differently offensively. I'm not saying we won't uh, play through the post because we will. Um, we have guys that are really good in there. EJ's really good in there. Uh, Zed is really good in there. So we have some guys that are good in there, but I think it'll allow us to open the basket a little bit more offensively. Uh, obviously, my concern is being able to impact two-point field goal percentage, which we've always done really well defensively. Um, that, that's uh, probably my biggest concern, how it'll affect that end. Hey, you talked about Dwayne and him you know, maybe focusing on some other things as well as just scoring. Um, does it help that, I mean, you had guys like Justice and Seth who, as bigger guys who can also do some of those things, he doesn't necessarily have to feel like he's the only perimeter player who can consistently – you know, create his own shot. Yeah, you know, we, we really do see Justice as as a bit of a playmaker for us. Um, even though he's six seven and and a bigger guy, you know, we uh, JT when he was here our first year, uh, we played him a, a good amount at playmaking positions, even at the point spot. Um, he's not identical to to JT. Uh, JT had such an incredible motor, as we all know, and their games have some similarities. Uh, but they're, they're different players. But we do see him as, as playmaking through him. We're, we're going to need that. Um, we're, we're thin at the, at the perimeter positions. Um, um, we have, we have uh, put in a waiver for, for Jimmy uh, Sotos, uh, but uh, we, we don't have a word on that uh, yet. But, um, but we've, you know, we're, we're a little bit thin on the perimeter, so I think we will utilize – Justice and some playmaking ability along with Dwayne and CJ and, and Abel. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Adam. Sorry, I had to get to the unmute button. Chris, I, do you think this team is mature enough to handle all the sacrifices that you're going to have to make to, to have a season and to, to play a season safely? Yes. What, I do. I do. What, what gives you that, that confidence? What, why, do you, why do you feel that way? I've been incredibly impressed with um, with their maturity these last ten weeks. We we had uh, we had we had a really special deal the other day. We had a young man uh, on our team getting a, a minor car accident. It was a rainy night a couple nights ago, um, and um, it was uh, you know he he was fine. He's he's healthy. He loves his car. That was the most. Uh, frustrating thing for him fortunately it wasn't his accident or it wasn't his fault but uh his car was banged up pretty good he sends a group text to uh to our uh you know to his teammates and within literally five minutes um my one of our staff guys sent sent me a picture the entire team was there um and uh, kind of just there in support because it was right around campus right basically on campus so I think we've got a group that uh, is mature, that cares about each other. And, um, you know, that's a good place to start. Again, we've got a lot of questions we've got to answer. But I do feel pretty confident, Adam, in seeing them operate given – and you're right. There's, there's no we, – we know that uh, there are certain things you can do to prevent the risk of getting COVID, but you can't completely prevent um, the, the risk. But I, I do believe that after seeing our guys – day to day here for the last 10 weeks. Um, I like our maturity. And do you have a feel for how obviously you're, you're um, taking a pay cut and obviously the, all the departments are, are facing some financial realities. Do you have a feel for the full effects of what the basketball pro program is going to feel as university copes with, you know, all the financial losses? Yeah, we, we've had to change and, and will continue to change. And, and Gene has uh, asked us uh, to change how we would operate. And certainly we've been able to, um, we haven't been recruiting, right? So there's been a large number of expenses that, that have been saved, but uh, we have looked at uh, uh, busing more than flying uh, with uh, appropriate games this year, wherever that's gonna be, uh, instead of chartering, uh, taking a bus. And we've looked at, uh, you know, some, some more kind of day-to-day -day operations uh, in, in, in a cost-cutting way. Uh, that's what's been asked of us, and um, we've certainly been willing to do it. Thank All you. Right, well, that'll wrap it up, guys. Appreciate your time. Okay, thanks, guys. Be well. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Thanks, All right, Coach. Thanks.